Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship this morning, especially those who are joining us online. We are so glad that you are here. I have a couple of um, brief announcements that I want to make sure that you all are aware of. Um, Within the next week or so, we're going to be putting together our November newsletter. We decided um, we're going to split November and December up because there's a lot of information and, and stuff that is coming um, that we don't want to print um, too soon just in case we have more stuff that we wanted to add to December's. So, um, so if you have anything that you'd like to add to the newsletter for November, um, please let us know. Um, we're going to get it out sooner rather than later because we want to make sure people are aware about our the white elephant sale, um, which is I'm just blanking on it the second week in November, twelfth, <laughs> the twelfth. Um, so if you're not aware of that, please um, mark it on your calendars. Um, it's exciting times. Um, other than that, um, next week. Women's Bible Study in the morning, Saturday, 9.30, here at Faith. Awesome. And, um, and start getting me names of people you would like to remember and recognize as All Saints Sunday is coming up um, November 6th. So, um, with that, are there any other community announcements or concerns we need to be made aware of? Of goods was given. Yes, we, we did our, the food pantry was yesterday, um, and our congregation sent off 100 pounds of food. Um, and we served at least 15 families. There might have been more, we left 10 minutes early. But it was um, right towards the end, and I don't think anyone came after us. So. Um, it, it was um, good to know that we are part of something larger than ourselves and helping to care for our community. So thank you for all who donated, for all who um, came and helped um, pack bags and, and load. Um, I know um, Pete and Diane were there, um, Sharon was there, um, the Leaks were there, um, and I know that uh, unloading the food truck the, the Friday before, or was it Monday? Monday. Uh, the, the whole, was it the Tuckers and the Johnsons? And so, the, yeah, sort of, yeah. It, it was <laughs> some, a combination of, of families um, helped. So uh, thank you for, for your time, your efforts, and um, for your service. It makes a difference. With that, let us begin our worship this morning as we confess our need for God. Please rise. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days. Amen. Amen. Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we, we confess, confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Beloved of God, your sins are forgiven and you are made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. O oh Lord God, tireless guardian of your people, you are always ready to hear our cries. Teach us to rely day and night on your care. Inspire us to seek your enduring justice for all this suffering world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we hear what God's word has to say to us this morning. Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Today's psalm is Psalm 21, 121, which I think was my grandma Laura's favorite psalm. If I remember. Uh, let us read it responsibly. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where is my help to come? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord will not let your foot be moved, nor will the one who watches over you fall asleep. Behold, the kingdom of Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will preserve you from all evil and will keep your life. The Lord will watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. The second lesson is taken from 2 Timothy chapter 3. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent, whether the time is favorable or unfavorable. Convince, rebuke, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience in teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own desires, and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to not 
to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later, he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice, so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen, ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Brothers and sisters in Christ, this is indeed the gospel, the good news of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Praise, Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated, and the children are invited forward for a children's message. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Today we have another fun little parable to unpack. <laughs> Grant me justice against my opponent, says the widow to the unjust judge. I think the temptation, as the story unfolds, is that we often think that God is the unjust judge. We are to pepper and pester God with the cries for mercy and justice, and finally, albeit in an exasperated way, God relents, and we are appeased. I'm good at that. That's how I got my first kitten. When I was 11 years old, I pestered and pestered and pestered. My parents didn't want to have it. 
Not at all. Not. They wanted a hole in their head more than they wanted a cat. They did not. My dad would often say, the best cat is a dead cat. <laughs> and, but I had a friend, and her cat had kittens, and I watched, and I wanted a good reason. Just because was not good enough. I needed a good reason. Why were we not allowed to have a cat? And my dad said, well, we are a military family, and we have a dog, and if we were to relocate, we only have room in our station wagon for a dog. We don't have room for a cat. Well, two weeks later, my dad brought home an 18-passenger van. <laughs> And the next week, I brought home a kitten. <laughs> I know how to be persistent. Trace does too, by the way. I think that's kind of why we have six animals in our home right now. And he gets it honestly from me, though don't tell him I said that. <laughs> when we look at our text today, it's easy to see it from this perspective. From if we are just noisy enough, just whining enough, like a child to a parent, they'll eventually break and give us what we want. But I think we need to pause. We might need to take a step back and relook at this text. Did you know? that a form of the word justice, which has its root, D-I-K-H, which I believe is pronounced deek, but I always give myself this credit. <coughs> the Greek we study in the Bible is a dead language. That means nobody really knows what it sounds like, so I can pronounce it any way I want to. <laughs> Don't tell my three professors that. But, um, anyways, that form appears seven times in our text of eight verses. Seven times in eight verses we get the root form of justice. Apparently, our gospel writer thinks justice is something we really need to pay attention to. And coming from Luke, we're not wrong. Luke is all about justice. Also, the word rendered opponent is more literally translated as adversary, which is even more literally adviti dikos, namely one who is anti-justice. The NRSV, the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible that we, we use, translates what the widow says, or translates, keeps bothering me, what the judge says about the widow. If we look at that literally, what the Greek word says, gave me a black eye. It doesn't come across in English in that way. It comes across in English, she keeps bothering me. But in Greek, it's our idiom. She, she's giving me a black eye. So literally, she punched it. That's not very nice. She's pestering him, bugging him, literally giving him a black eye. And in our Midwestern culture, we have a hard time seeing that kind of persistence. And the him who she punched is one who did not fear God. Now, I don't know about you, but when I heard that, one who did not fear God, it brought me instantly back to my confirmation days and learning about the Ten Commandments. You know, the very first commandment, 
where we are to fear and love God, and that we shall have no other gods but God, which is an indication that even God knew that there were options. This is a guy who can't and blatantly doesn't want to get the first commandment down. Pastor Davis, in his blog, Left Behind and Loving It, he writes, This judge dude lives life as if there is no moral order to this universe, and as if life has no divine purpose, meaning, or consequences, and that the one with power has no sense of accountability for serving justice rather than one's own self-interest. Davis goes on to Pose the question, rather than God being the judge, as is so often assumed that this parable is, what would happen if we saw God in the widow? Think on it. What would happen if we saw that God is the one who is clamoring, pastoring, giving the powerful? <clears throat> That would be us. Black eyes until we relent. Kind of wrestling with God. Kind of brings us back to our first lesson with Jacob. Wrestling with God. Or to take an effect, stretch further down the road. What if we are the ones who are called to speak on behalf of God? What if we followers of Christ were the widows? What if we are the ones who are called to relentlessly keep going to the powerful, to those who have no fear of God and no respect for people, and say, grant justice. And what if we empower those in our lives to be the widow too? To resist the evil of the day. To relentlessly keep going to the powerful. To those who have no fear of God and no respect for people and say, grant justice. What if, in short, we remember our baptism? and remind others of theirs. Is that not exactly the very thing to which we were baptized to do? Called as Christians to do? Do you remember your baptismal promises? Maybe not. Some of you, like myself, I was three months old. But I remember those promises from confirmation. I remember The promises that we promise to live out our lives. We promise in our baptismal covenant to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. It's a big commitment. Until we faithfully live that out, there is reason for and ways to lament. Because God knows this world needs justice. But then there's hope to be found. Because why? Because the gospel tells us so. There is news that there is death all around us. There is trauma and there is grief and there is exhaustion. 
God's people are tired. But then there's newsier news. The good news. The euangelion. Remember that's that fun Greek word that means gospel? Good news? The euangelion is that Jesus is realer. Or like my friend Emma Matson always says, death is real. Life is realer. Friends, let us follow in the example of Jesus. Follow our baptismal con our baptismal covenant and the promises that we are here to live out. May we be the winnow. Amen.
in gratitude and humility. Let us join together in prayer on behalf of all God's creation. For all the baptized, that they become skilled in compassion and grace and equipped to share the good news with all. Grant your followers persistence in proclamation and prayer. In our congregational prayers for this week, we pray especially for Dick and Sharon Gilbert. Strengthen them in their baptism so they may continue the ministry you have called them to. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For air and sky, clouds and sun, that they provide rain to parched land and relief to flooded ground. Renew and restore our polluted atmosphere and empower us to be worthy stewards of creation. Hear us, O oh God. For judges, juries, and all who work in the judicial system, that they desire wisdom, seek truth, rule with fairness, and have the courage to do what is right. Eliminate oppression and injustice in our criminal systems, in our criminal justice system. Hear us, O oh God. For all who are lonely, especially those who have newly arrived in an unfamiliar city or country, political prisoners without recourse to justice, hospital patients without visitors, and any who are ill or grief-stricken. Today we pray for those in our community, especially Betty, Dick, Myrna, Jeanette, Linda, Chuck, Ryan, Jeremy, Wanda, Barb, Carrie, and Nancy. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those in our congregation and community engaged in advocacy work, that with the persistence of the widow, they lift their voices in seeking justice on behalf of others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. For those who have taught us faith and now rest in your heavenly peace that we remember and give thanks for these saints who shared the gospel through word and deed. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. With grateful hearts, we commend our spoken and silent prayers to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. May you share God's peace with those around you as you feel so comfortable. God's peace be with you. Our giving is an act of worship, and at this time we receive our offering.
pray. Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing, and then make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets us a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying take and eat this is my body given for you do this for the remembrance of me again after supper he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin do this for the remembrance of me Remembering, therefore, his life given for us and his rising from the grave, we await his coming again to share with us the everlasting feast. By your spirit, nurture and sustain us with this meal. Strengthen us to serve all in hunger and want. And by this bread and cup, make of us your body and blood. Through him, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with your Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. <coughs> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste and see. There is a place for you.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. What joys and celebrations do we have to shout out today? Liz had a birthday. Liz had a birthday. I saw that. Lennox Bean will be two on the 17th. Uh, how did that happen? <laughs> yeah, and Emmett's is right close because they had a party yesterday with both of them. Yeah. Yeah. I talked to Helen. Yes, hers is the twenty or his is the twenty third. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll be five, I think. Probably. Grandpa said. Norm Gross celebrated a birthday on the thirteenth. Awesome. Any other good news? How did United do in their homecoming game? Oh no. We did <laughs> Jake won his football game. All right. Undefeated for the season. Woo. There will be a community event. October 22nd for the Rome Wasteful football team for the playoffs. playoffs. That will be at Wasteful High School. That's pretty awesome. exciting. Yes! Cleveland Guardians are up by two. <laughs> yes! <laughs> the Cleveland Guardians are up by two. <laughs> uh, well, this we're going to sing to you. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.
Thanks be to God.